Welcome, welcome everybody to Stranger Species episode, we think, 13. I mean, you you think 13. Last Pretty week, sure it's 13. We, okay, last week we didn't know either. So. I never know. Maybe that means we've done enough to not know. Well, I don't feel like I knew way back from the beginning. I'm just bad at this. Oh, well. Bad at knowing. <laughs> okay. I think it's 13. Perfect. Barely confident in that. That's great. Yeah, lucky 13. Good thing it's not Friday. There is a, what kind of moon? A blue moon? I have no idea. I think it's a blue moon right now. Ooh, sounds fancy. It's very pretty. I bet. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Good. Coming up on Labor Day long weekend. Yeah, it is a long weekend here in the States this weekend. And so we're actually recording early this time because we're not going to be home for the next four days. Yeah, that's right. So here we go. Um, I kind of have a minor brain freeze. Because you made me eat a giant otter pop. A Canadian one. A Canadian one. It's called a Mr. Freezy. Mr. Freezy. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like a legit foot and a half, two feet long. It's not two feet long. It's like a foot and a half. It's pretty big. It is. They're huge. And you made me eat it. Declare it our freezer because you made a pie. Two pies. Two pies. With peaches. Yummy. Yeah. Love peaches. I bought like 50 pounds of peaches today. So good things. Just uh, now I have a little bit of a brain freeze lingering. (laughs) Hopefully it doesn't deter our show here. Luckily, nothing can deter our show. All right. All right. Here's the question for you. You ready? I'm ready for your question. All right. Real quick. Again, we have a bunch of new listeners. I'm sorry if if, uh, you're not new and you already know this. Format, Ethne. What are we talking about tonight? I have no idea. You never have any idea. That's right. But we're going to find out right now. Okay. This is the question. Who is the manliest man you've ever met? The manliest man that I have ever met? Yep. What makes a man a man? I don't know. Like big muscles? Like burly? Like like a stereotypical manly man. Like a lumberjack? Like Gaston or a lumberjack or... Oh, gosh. Um, oh, I mean, my dad's a pretty manly man. Your dad is a manly man. But he also loves to go grocery shopping, too. Is that manly? Hmm. Yeah, you know, we all got our things. Okay. Um, I, I can't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I was thinking about this myself. No, not me. Maybe you? No. (laughs) Not me. Um... I'm like quasi manly man. Do you have like a man not, in mind that you know? Like maybe, maybe like Macho Man Randy Savage. But you don't know him. I'm just kidding. No, I don't have. But I was thinking the same thing. Like mountainy man people yeah. that live out. Oh, like, like Jeff those guys. Bennett's brother. Yeah, he likes to. I mean, back for a long time. Well, but he also is like kind of big and burly and kind of like. I don't know where's Plaid and yeah, I think like the guys that are like on that show alone. Yeah, I can't picture any of them though. Like, well, not even physically. Just they have a skill set. Okay, they can build themselves a house. They can hunt food. They can yeah, you know, survive. I hate being cold. Maybe my cousin Blaine. Maybe yeah, he he can do all of those things and kill animals and hunt and make all the things out of them and well today we're going to talk about a guy who's so manly oh. that he makes all those people mere babes oh on the manliness scale Ooh, this will be interesting yeah we're going to talk about a guy by the name of hugh glass all right and he was a famous frontiersman and the basis for the movie the revenant you asked someone earlier yeah. about The Revenant, and then I was like, why are you asking so random? He's like, I don't know. Just thinking about it. You Because you were thinking about this show tonight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. But you didn't give it away. No, because that's the whole point. It's for you not to know things. Okay. So The Revenant, uh, I know you've never seen it. Nope. Never even heard of it. Well, I'm sure you heard of it because I saw it and I really wanted you to see it. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. Are you sure? dead positive we we do this a lot in our yeah. life <laughs> stars uh leonardo dicaprio huh 
believe he won an Oscar for Best Actor that year for The Revenant. Mm-hmm. So it's like newish. Yeah. Since we've been here in Spokane, it's probably like seven years old. Oh. Five to seven, eight. Somewhere in that range. Um, so the movie is about Hugh Glass, this guy, Leonardo DiCaprio plays him, and he gets mauled by a bear, a grizzly bear, out in the wilderness. And you're saying you've seen this without me? Yeah. In the theater? No. Oh, okay. No, no. Um, and his buddies leave him for dead, essentially. Why did they leave him? Well, this, they were frontiers guys out in the middle of nowhere. You don't, like, help your friend? Well, we'll get to all that. We'll get to all that. But anyways, okay. Leonardo DiCaprio played this character in this movie. I'm very appalled. But this dude in real life, I mean, that was, like, one of many crazy things he lived through. Oh, and I thought, dude, this guy is a he is cool. He, We're gonna talk about this guy. Okay, he is cool. Hugh Glass. Hugh Glass. Born, we don't know when. I feel like Hugh Glassman. Like Hugh Jackman. Like Hugh Jackman. This guy is like kind of like Wolverine, yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking, who's the other Hugh Grant? I was like, yeah, not as you know, that's not as Hugh Grant is like a that's like a rom com chick guy. flick. Yeah, yeah, like a chick flick guy. But no, he wouldn't be as good no. for this. Hugh Glassman. Hugh Glassman, a.k.a. Hugh Wolverine. Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's him. Okay, perfect. So we don't know when he was born exactly. Uh, sometime around 1783. This was like a long time ago yeah, yeah. that he was born. So there's not really... So it's all fake. No, not fake. I'm just kidding. We had history 200 years ago. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, keep going. Um, we think in Pennsylvania... But if he wasn't born in Pennsylvania, we're pretty sure he was born somewhere. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. That, I think, could be deduced. See? So far, it's not made up. He was actually born. Um, We don't know much about his early early childhood life, anything. He doesn't really show up in any history books, stories, um, until about 1816, when all of a sudden he is a sailor. In the Gulf of Mexico. Hmm. Sounds like a good place. Yeah. But he's a sailor. He's doing his thing. He's out on the waters. And this is when, as you would say, his life goes cuckoo bananas. Oh, yeah. I like cuckoo bananas. You do like saying that. <laughs> Whenever you say it, I think of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And then I start thinking cocoa. And then I want to say cocoa bananas. And it just throws me off. No, oh, that's too bad. Cuckoo bananas. So while sailing, his ship is attacked by the infamous pirate, Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow was a real pirate? Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's not just a made up character name? No. That's crazy. I know. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Um, No, because I made that up. Are you being, wait, you lied to me that whole time? Well, not the whole time, but the Captain Jack Sparrow part. That was rude. But he was attacked by a real infamous pirate, Jean Lafitte. Ooh. Have you heard that French name? guy. French guy, yep. Um, their ship was attacked. They fought his whole crew. He wasn't like the captain of the ship or anything. He was just on it. But pretty much their whole crew was slaughtered. But he fought so hard and so valiantly. That they wanted him to join their team. They gave him an ultimatum. You can either become a pirate and come live with us. Or I'll kill you. And so he decided that he was going to be a pirate. It was time for a career change. <laughs> Sailor to pirate is, it's relevant. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Yeah. It wasn't like a big career change. Yeah, it's relevant. Yeah, it was like going from selling cars to selling heavy machinery. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, totally. He could do it. So he decides to become a pirate. I don't know much about pirate life other than what it looks like at Disneyland. In Pirates of the Caribbean. And the movies. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of curses and cool stuff. Yeah. But wench selling and chasing people and burning stuff, a lot of pillaging. I don't know if that necessarily sounds fun, but when, well, whatever I, floats I your boat. I know that pirates oftentimes died from STDs. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine. So he did that for a couple of years. Wasn't like his favorite thing. Could you be like a nice pirate? Like, kind of pretend like you're doing all the mean stuff, but just, like, kind of be there? Maybe. Maybe yeah. we kind of hang back. Yeah. Not do as much. Because he's kind of like, well, I, I have to. Or why doesn't he just, like, 
try to escape. Like one of these times when they're pillaging, he just kind of like disappears and then he's a free man. Yeah. Maybe you're onto something. Oh, okay. All right. So he doesn't really like it. I think I know where this yeah. is going. So I think he's actually a pretty bad pirate. Like he's just not good at it. Something happens. I don't know what, but he ends up getting kind of like in pirate trouble. And he's almost like going to have to stand trial in front of Captain Jean Lafitte. Like in front of the, his own captain. Right. Oh, maybe and he wasn't doing a good job. That's what I'm saying. He like only killed people. five and everyone killed like 30. Wasn't meeting his quota. Dang. Of terrorizing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So him and another crewman who also was a pretty bad pirate decided we're just jumping shit, man. And we'll see what happens. Were they like in the middle of the ocean or kind of close? From what I read, which is, you know, who knows what, they're about two miles away. It's a good swim. Yeah. In uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Mm. Okay. They jump, they swim, they both make it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Where, I mean, the Gulf of Mexico is pretty big. Yeah. So they end up around uh, current Galveston, Texas. Oh, okay. So they got nothing. They're young guys. No life. No food no possessions they don't know this is still very um pre-western expansion of the united states right they're not in the united states um and so they decide they're going to head up to kansas about 700 miles and look for some settlements up there because they knew that there were people Mm -hmm. there yeah yeah. and they kind of knew where they were low like where they were at geographically apparently enough enough all right so they start uh, the march up there. You want to say something? Well, I was thinking uh, we do know some other pirates, like Captain Hook and all of his pirates. Yeah, but they're in they're in Neverland. So, did you think he got boo boxed? Mm, maybe. I don't think he got boo boxed, but maybe he was about to get the boo box. And so he was like, "That's it, jump and ship." That freaked me out as a kid. Oh yeah, it was so creepy. Love that movie. Oh, me too. But the boo box was. Anyway, I just got thinking, like, maybe that was a real thing. I'm sure the pirates had all sorts of nasty things. But who thinks of these things? I mean, if you've never seen Hook, the oh, boo you... box is like a treasure chest with a little slot they would put you in, and then they would drop scorpions in on you. But it's not a treasure and chest. Go, it's boo. It's more like a coffin fashion. box. Was it that big? Oh, yeah, because he was, small. like, laying in it. I thought they kind of Like, in, in your there. whole body. Right. <gasps> but you're box. in, like, the dark darkness while they're crawling all over you. Yeah. And pinching you. Ah. Yeah. I wouldn't be cut out to be a pirate. I don't think. No, I don't think so. No, I'm not very mean. All right. So, so they go to Kansas. They well, they're think on they're their some, way to Kansas. On their way to Kansas. Which okay. is a great place. Yeah. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Because that's where you were born. Um, And on there, they get captured by the Pawnee tribe. Okay. Now, the Pawnee... Are can, known. Can they capture you because you're on their land kind of thing? Or can anyone capture anyone back then? You can do whatever they want, man. Okay, cool. But I'm sure they were on their land. Okay. Pawnee, huh? Yep. Now, the Pawnee are historically known for committing human sacrifices. Mm. Not all the time. Just like when you need, when you need fertility one. or water or whatever, you know. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um. So... Hugh Glass and his buddy get captured, and his buddy gets Sacrifice. burnt alive at the stake. By the Pawnee? By the Pawnee. Why? I'm not sure why. I don't know if it was a ritualistic thing. If he was like, maybe when they got captured, he fought really hard, and maybe Glass didn't. So I don't know what. Oh, sad. But they burn him, and there's some more details about it. It's kind of gruesome, but I won't go into it. No need. Okay. But for whatever reason, they keep him alive. They let him live. Not only do they let him live, they adopt him into the tribe. This guy likes to get adopted into he's, random. He's a schmoozer, man. He's a schmoozer. Yeah. He's got a lot of charisma. So he is kind of like Gaston. Yeah. Oh. Totally. Yeah. Okay. He's got a big cleft on his chin. And he eats five dozen eggs. Every morning to help him get large. Okay. All right. So now he is he's a part of the, the pony. the size of a barge. Oh, sorry. Now, now he's a pony. He's a Pawnee, kind of. Kind of like Last Mohicans. Right, like adopted in. Yep. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, 
But he lived with him for a couple of years. I bet he learned a lot of cool he stuff. He learned a lot yeah. of really good skills. Life skills, yeah. Of living out in the wilderness. Being one with the land. Right. Tracking. Surviving. Yep. Yep. Um, I don't know much about his time there. Right. What he does, what he doesn't do. Um, why he leaves. But he ends up leaving. Um, do I have a date for when he leaves? Maybe. Nope, but sometime in the early 1820s. Okay. He leaves, excuse me. Like with permission or kind of like sneaks away? As far as I could tell with permission. Okay, cool. And he heads up to St. Louis. This is extremely different than Kansas, but. Yeah, they're really close. They're not far. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh. St. Louis is in Missouri. Missouri borders Kansas. I guess it's not as far away as I was thinking. Yeah. Um, Remember, I was born in Canada. That's right. So my geography of the United States is not near as cool as yours hey most people in the united states have no idea where anything is in the united states so don't feel bad okay good yeah all right um so it's in st louis where he finds an advertisement from the rocky mountain fur company where they are looking for a hundred of the roughest toughest dudes out there that's literally the advertisement yes that's hilarious it's like American Idol, like you, so you think you can sing, you know? Yeah. And you show up. I wonder how many people they got that are like, yeah, you are not, you did not read the small print. Yeah. So going back to like our Pirates of the Caribbean reference, you know, when Jack's trying to get his first crew and mm-hmm. they're just like, oh, yeah. Any drunker, any doesn't drunk, matter, one yeah. eye, one leg, doesn't matter. This mm-hmm. is not that. Okay. They want the best the of mo- the best. The best of the best. Because they're going to go up to the Missouri River. They're going to travel about 2,000 miles to Fort Henry. And it's going to be one to three years. And then from Fort Henry, they are going to use that as a base camp to um, go out and trap and collect furs and do all that kind of stuff. Seems like a big job. So he's pumped. This is like, that's great job security. I'm super awesome. I'm a manly man. I'm signing up. I mean, I've been a pirate. I've been a Pawnee. Yep. I mean. It's time to be a mountain man. His resume is getting big. It's stacked. Yeah. Yeah. So he joins what becomes known as Ashley's 100 after one of the founders of the fur company, um, William Ashley. So they start their expedition, two boats up the Missouri River, going nice and slow. They got a long ways to go. They have, are they rowing themselves or do they have like motors in the day, this day? No, no. You're rowing up the river. I would assume so. That's a, does it flow kind of like the Ponderé or is it like... <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about this actually. When like, I was reading all the stuff. I'm like, hmm. That's... Upstream. Seems terrible. Okay. But they're going. Again, last week we covered neither one of us are sailors. I don't know how this works. Yeah, that's true. We really did cover that. Was it last week that we did that one? No, that was two weeks that ago. That was two weeks ago. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, so they're going up nice and slow and everything's going really good until it doesn't go good anymore. Mm-hmm. They get ambushed by the Arakara tribe. Oof, I've never heard of that tribe. Me either, but it's really fun to say. That is you really say it. Arakara. There you go. Yeah. I like that name. So they're going, they get ambushed. All out fight. Shooting left and right. Dudes diving over things. In and out of the water. Um... Mr. Hugh Glass, our buddy, gets shot in the leg. Not a fun day. When it's all said and done, they survive. They retreat. They go back downstream. But they got a bunch of injured guys and 14 dead. Mm, Sad. And so they, the the leaders, or the owners of the fur company, um, Andrew Henry and William Ashley, have invested way too much money in this whole Fort Henry I mean, it's named after him, right? Um, fur trap in business. So they're like, we got to we gotta go back. Like, we got to get there still, even if we're going to get attacked. Like, we got to find some other way to do it. So they come up with a plan. We're going to split into two groups. So Ashley takes a group of them, and they <clears> head straight west. And they're just going trapping. It's like, we're going to go look for furs to make some money. And Henry takes the rest of the group. And they go back up the Missouri River, but they're now going to go on foot kind of through the wilderness, hoping to avoid the Arakara. 
to not, what did they do with their boats? Uh, yeah, they left them somewhere. Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe they brought them. I don't know what you do with them. Okay, cool. Um, so Hugh Glass joins the second company. The ones that are going back up river. Well, they're going to walk. Yeah. Yeah. But so. they're walking up the river. Right. Which okay. is a wonderful idea if you're getting shot in the leg. Yeah. I mean, how do you, yeah. Must not have been like a super bad wound. Right. A flesh wound. So they split, they head back up. Um, like I said, he gets shot, but apparently he's good enough. So while on this trip with Henry, they are, he goes out hunting one day. And while he's hunting in the woods, he somehow manages to stumble. He's by himself. I mean, he's with some other guys, but they're all spread out, you know. He manages to find himself between some baby cubs and a mama grizzly bear. Mm, bad news. Bad news. Mm-hmm. And this is where the movie takes place. Um, he gets ferociously attacked by the grizzly bear. Oof. Like, rips him two pieces. Uh, in the movie, which isn't that accurate, surprisingly, he manages... It's a, it's a it's a hard scene to watch. It's like five minutes of Ugh. getting mauled. That's terrible. But he, in the movie, he does manage to shoot the bear once at the beginning. And then as the bear's essentially killing him, he's just going around stabbing the bear over and over. And eventually he kills the bear. Mm. In real life, that's probably not what happened. What really happened was probably the other hunters heard him screaming as he's being literally eviscerated, came running over, probably shot and killed the bear. You know, either way, not a great morning if you're Hugh Glass. Um, one of the other trappers, his name was Hiram Allen, was on the scene. He wrote this, and I quote, the monster had torn the flesh from the lower part of his body and from the lower limbs. He also had his neck shockingly torn, even to the degree that an aperture appeared to have been made into the windpipe and his breath to exude at the side of his neck. Blood flowed freely, but fortunately no bone was broken and his hands and arms were not disabled. End quote. So his neck so ripped open that he's got like a cr- crickles. It's almost like he's got a tracheotomy. Yeah, yeah. like a they. Pop. Right. Yeah. Like he's breathing. You can see the blood, you know, bubbling Sick. in his throat as he's breathing through. But they didn't break his any trachea bones. Well, that's what Hiram Allen says. Like it didn't appear that way. We're gonna find out later. Hiram Allen is no physician. He didn't know what he's talking about. Oh, okay. But anyway, so they see him there. They know he's dead. I mean, he's, well, he's not dead. They can tell he's alive, but he's going to die. I mean, they're hundreds of miles from civilization. He's torn to shreds. He, they're just, he's a dead man. It's just borrowed time. So they put him on a stretcher. They take him back to the group. Well, not a stretcher. They make a little mm-hmm. something, you know. And they meet with the main group. And uh, so Henry, the camp leader... Says, okay, we're going to wait for him to die. You know, it won't be long. We'll give him a proper burial, and then we'll get out of here. Because you have to remember, they're still in Arakar territory. Like, they're trying not to be ambushed at any right. moment. So they want to be moving fast. And so that's what they decided to do. But after two days, Glass is still alive. He's not getting any better, but he's not dead. And they say the only thing they can really tell he's dead is the occasional flicker of his eyes. But his breathing's so shallow, you know, that it's hard to tell if he's alive. Um, but Henry's getting really anxious about hanging out. He's not a bad dude. So he actually comes up with a pretty good plan. He asks for any volunteers. And he says, anyone who wants to stay and wait with Hugh until he dies and buries him, then you can come catch up with us. I'll give you $80, which was equivalent to a few thousand dollars back then. So he gets two volunteers, John Fitzgerald, 
who was a veteran trapper, kind of like Hugh Glass, you know, had been a little rough around the edges, had been out in the woods for a long time. And a young guy, we only name his, know his name is Bridger, he was a 17-year-old. Now, there is a really famous frontiersman named Jim Bridger who was part of this expedition. So some people think that this is a young Jim Bridger, but there's no way of, of verifying that. Um, so they stay behind. But after a few more days, he's still not dead. And he's still not um, getting better. He's just in this like almost like a comatose state. And they're getting really anxious too. Like, oh my goodness, like this is good money to stay around for a day. But now, like the longer we sit here, the more open we are to getting attacked. And so he's not coming back. He's going to die. So ultimately they decide they take his gun, take his knife, they take his gear. Um, They put a a buffalo skin on him. It's kind of like a shawl. And they just leave him. Because we don't got time to wait around for him to die. But they go back. They catch up to everyone else. And they tell him he died. We buried him. It's all good. Uh Uh-oh. What do you think happens? You've never seen the movie. I mean, I'm assuming he doesn't die. But he, maybe the Arakara find him and they nurse him back to health. And he joins their tribe. Yes, I'm serious. Like the Pawnee. Yeah. Because maybe. So he wakes up from his stupor at some point. Oh he becomes God. conscious. Not unconscious, but back to right. consciousness. Whatever that's called. And he finds he's in the middle of nowhere. With nothing. No food. No gun. No knife. No flint. No horse, no gear. A buffalo blanket. He does have a buffalo hide. Completely abandoned and alone. Now he must have been conscious enough while he was lying there because he knows who left him. Uh Uh-oh. And he's not real pumped about it. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. He's a little angry that they took his gear and left him to die. Um, he's real mad. And so the only thing he's got is this burning desire to hunt down and kill these two guys. Wow. Which is what the movie is also about. Yeah. But still. Wow. Yeah. So this is where Mr. Allen, our physician buddy who wasn't a physician, the guy who did like quoted from, Oh, yeah, yeah. He was telling about his wounds and said he didn't have a broken bone. He very much had a very broken leg. And so um, Glass, um, he had all these festering wounds. I mean, literally his neck. I mean, we read how it was. You can see his ribs, you know. Um, He's got this broken leg. So he's more than 200 miles from the nearest settlement, which is Fort uh, Kiawa on the Missouri river. And so he wraps himself in this bear hide or Buffalo hide or whatever he had. And he starts crawling back towards the fort. You're kidding me. No, this is insane. Literally crawling because he can't walk. We're not even crawling. He's army. Like crawling is like hands and knees. Like like, he is literally army crawling. Right. Through the wilderness. Please tell me that someone finds him and helps him. He does not army crawl 200 miles, Michael. Well, he crawls for about a week. I have no idea how many miles you can crawl in a week. Me either. Probably not very many. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Along the way, he is, you know, drinking out of puddles that he comes across, small streams. Is he not in excruciating pain? I'm sure he is. I can't. I don't don't even understand. He eats bugs that are literally on the ground you know as he's crawling he'll like lick up ants and stuff dude this guy told you this guy is the manliest man you've ever met this is legit like he has zero um pain reception at all yeah i don't know what he's got i mean how i don't know okay okay so he's eating crawling crawling eating bugs crawls for a week about a weekend he does have a divine intervention. Okay. But it's not a person. Is it an animal? He comes across a pack of wolves. It's like Mowgli. They raise him. Oh. 
No, they don't raise them. They're eating a buffalo. And so he waits until they're done. And once they leave, he kind of sets up a camp there and he hangs out and he makes a fire and he eats himself just stupid full of buffalo. How does he make a fire? That's what I wondered too. But he's like the manliest man ever. So he probably just like took a leak and it burst into flames or something. Whoa. I don't know how he did either. Okay. But he said he, he, um, yeah. So he Can eats. you eat raw buffalo? I'm not sure. I've never tried. You've had raw horse. I have. I have. That's uh, more rawness than I've ever had. <laughs> Basashi. But you never had raw buffalo, huh? Mm-mm. But you can eat cow pretty rare. You so can. That I is mean, true. I guess obviously he didn't die from eating the buffalo. I mean, <laughs> he didn't get die from getting mauled by a grizzly bear. So. The guy can't die, man. Yeah, he literally. He's can't. Wolverine. He's like, he's like a cat. Or a cat. Like nine lives. Are wolverines part of the canine family? Are they more cat family or I totally have, separate? Uh, I have no idea. Doesn't matter. Okay. Side note. So he eats. He's pretty happy about that. He uh, gets some maggots or allows maggots into all of his nasty cuts. He wants the maggots? Mm -hmm. Please help me know why. Well, it's actually a uh, maggots eat rotten flesh. So they actually do like maggot therapy is an actual thing you can do. It prevents gangrene. What? Yeah. So side note. Uh, I went on a humanitarian mission to Dominican Republic. Um, Can you call my, it a mission or more of a vacation? I went on a humanitarian vacation <laughs> where I did lots and lots and lots of wonderful things for people. But my wife's bitter about it because she was in, in home in Cleveland, pregnant in the snow. With a toddler that was sick. While I was in the tropics. But he really did play a lot. Okay, sorry. Not a lot. We played. <sighs> But not nearly as long as we worked. Okay, keep going with your maggot story. But anyways, there was a lady there that came to when we were out in the mountains who came with this nasty, nasty infection in her leg. But it was full of maggots. But they were doing a good job keeping it clean. That's so weird. Yeah. So the maggots from the buffalo, he I like... Don't know, I don't know if the maggots were just forming on him naturally because oh. he was rotting. Oh my gosh, this is so or terrible. If he found maggots... And place them into his. So like if you find maggots, you leave them. I don't like maggots. So generally I stay away from them. No, but I mean like on that lady. You just left them there because they were doing a good job? Oh. Um, unless you have a better treatment for them. I mean, you're going to have to do something eventually, right? Yeah. Like you can't just leave it. But in the interim, yeah, they're great. Okay, cool. But so, it's not going to like solve your problem. Okay. So he lets the maggots get him. Yep. This is disgusting by the way so he's just, he's just camping he's got maggots in his side and his neck he's eating his buffalo he's in good shape he man. made a fire somehow yeah okay this is nuts he's doing good okay he's a manly man hugh glassman no, yeah just... so he's got enough strength after this to continue his crawling <laughs> he okay. does splint his own leg you know so mm -hmm. that's that's good well, because it's going to start healing and the bone's going to start osteointegrating like crooked or mouth. I mean, if he doesn't do something soon. So do you think he set his own leg? I don't know. I don't know what kind of break it was. Yeah. It's, this is nuts to think about. Okay. But uh, this, so this is all in the area of kind of modern day Wyoming. Okay. Nope. Lied to you. The, the Dakotas. Oh, the Dak I love the Dakotas. Yeah. Very pretty. The Black Hills. Mm -hmm. Um. He was up by the Yosemite River when he got attacked. But, uh, so there's this place called, what's it called? It's called something. I have it written down here. It's Big Butte. Man. There we go. Thunder Butte. It's about 3,000 feet tall. It's crazy. It's this hill out there that has nothing around it. It's just like this one giant hill that you can see for miles in all directions because it's super flat. Hmm. So he sees this eventually and he knows, okay, if I head towards that, then I can get to the river. Eventually he gets to there. He gets to a river. Either he makes himself a little raft 
or some nice natives give him a raft. Somehow he gets on the water and he floats down to the fort. And he makes it to the fort. Wow. Six weeks. After being mauled by the bear. Wow. The only thing he's got is a fire burning to kill these dudes. So revenge is a very good motivator. In case you're wondering, just learn from this man. Well, it's a good motivator if you're trying to stay alive in the wilderness. I might argue it's not the greatest motivator in a lot of things in life. I mean, yeah. Okay. But if you're suffering from a near fatal bear attack, revenge might be a good a good modem. Modem? Nope. Motive. To stay alive. Thank you. English is so hard. <laughs> oh, so he, yeah, he's one angry dude. So he gets to the fort. He's at the fort for a whopping couple of days. Do the people help him? Yep. It's actually because he's part of the um, Rocky Mountain Fur Company, he's actually able to get a fair amount of equipment on like a loan or on like a credit mm. because they know they'll get it back. So, you know, but so. I'm just trying to figure out, like, why did he only stay for a couple of days? I feel like he needed to just recuperate more. Well, one would think that uh, he stays a couple of days because he joins another expedition that's heading back towards Fort Henry because he wants to go kill these guys. But I mean, he can't even walk. Well, he can walk enough, I guess. I don't understand. Okay. So after a short stint at Fort Kiawa and getting a little better, you know. Then he uh, joins another expedition that's only going about halfway to Fort Henry to a little group of villages. But he's just going to, from there, go on his own the rest of the way, hiking through the wilderness up to Fort Henry. So he goes on this expedition. They get to the little villages. And I don't know if they rode up the river here. They might have. But here's the crazy part. You ready for this? I don't know if I can handle The day after he leaves... So they get to the villages, the expedition's there. He leaves. The next day, the village is attacked by the Arakara. Every single one of them's killed. That's crazy. Yeah. This guy's not meant to die. Not meant to die. Yeah. The Arakara chase after him. On his elbows? Well, he's probably like on a crutch now or something, you know, <laughs> hobbling through the woods. He just can't. Okay. So they come after him. He gets into a battle. With them, about ready to get killed, another tribe, who apparently doesn't like the Arakara, show up, fight with him, save the day. What? Yeah. This guy really is not meant to die. Yeah. Craziness, huh? (laughs) It's funny. They chased after him. How did they know that he had even left? I don't know. Maybe like they're they're good at tracking and they saw like his drag... His drag yeah, they're like, we don't know this track. <laughs> <laughs> oh this isn't God. a deer. Hey, this is crazy. And so... This is just so crazy. I know. It's craziness, right? So, um, he barely survives, but he takes off on another month-long hike alone to Fort Henry. Okay, wait. This other tribe, what do they think of him? I don't know. Do they help him? I mean, they help him kill the Arakara. Yeah, but I mean... Give him a little pat on the back and say, all right, buddy. Don't they look at this man and be like, dude, you need some serious help. Why don't we help you with our natural remedies or something? They're probably like, stupid white guy. You guys keep showing up here. (laughs) Go away. Okay. I just can't. Okay. So anyways, he goes a month alone, hiking towards Fort Henry. Still just so angry. He wants to kill these two guys. And he gets to Fort Henry. And guess what he finds? They're probably all dead by the Arakara. The fort is completely abandoned. Oh my goodness. Nobody's there. But like, they weren't killed. Nope. It's abandoned. Yep. So he's marched this whole way. Six weeks of crawling slash rafting to get to the fort. You join an expedition. You go upstream. You go to a they village. They get slaughtered. You chase... You get in a battle, you win, then you hike for a month, all the while, just wanting to kill these dudes. You get there, there's no one there. I would just stay there, hang out, make myself a home. Well, luckily he finds a note okay. posted in the kitchen. You know how your mom used to leave you a note before yep. like things were electronic? Mm-hmm. 
be like, oh, we're at the store. Be home at 530. Yep. Yeah. One of those notes. Mm. They said, hey, if you're looking for Fort Henry, we built another little fort down the road. We're not too far away. So he gets all excited. And he heads to that fort. And he shows up. He walks in. And everyone's like, oh, my goodness. It's the, a zombie. The, <laughs> he probably looks like a zombie. Yeah. His head's probably because of his neck injury, like yeah. hanging to the side. They're like, you're supposed to be super dead. We were told you were dead. Um, He finds a 17-year-old Bridger. And he just kills and him. And he pulls his gun out. Bam. Puts it in his face. And Bridger begs him not to kill him and says, like, he feels so terrible at what he did. He's so sorry. He felt like he had to because Fitzgerald was the older guy. You know, he couldn't not. In Glass, what do you think he does? He probably doesn't kill him. Yeah, he forgives him. And he says, okay, buddy. And where's Fitzgerald? Let me go kill that guy. Where's Fitzgerald? He's not at Fort Henry. He left a couple months earlier, joined the army, and was in Nebraska, which is a long ways away. Yeah. So he just gives up. It's like, this is the time where you just say, okay, I'm just going to chill now. Well, you've obviously never been left dead after being mauled by a bear. Yeah, but I, I feel like I'm smart enough to know, like, okay, it's okay. You can forgive them and move on. Yeah. He waits a couple months because he's got to wait for winter. Then he heads out to Nebraska. I bet that Bridger kid every night is like, Ooh. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the look on your face? You're like sitting there having dinner or something and in walks the guy that you were supposed to bury. The guy that you 100% thought would be dead. Yeah. I mean, it's like, Oh, Hey, remember that time I lied to you guys? Uh, well now my lie has a gun pointed at me. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. And so, um, yeah, he goes off and he gets to Nebraska and he finds Fitzgerald. I mean, Nebraska's a big place, no? Well, he knows which... Uh, Company or... Yeah, what camp he's at mm. or fort or whatever. And so he finds him and they're face to face and he pulls out his gun. Now in the movie, if you've seen the movie, and I hate to be a spoiler alert on a movie that's super old, so I don't really care. They get in a big like hand-to-hand combat you would hate it. Super bloody and gory and there's hatchets and knives and Gosh. he gets his revenge. But in real life, it doesn't quite work that way. They're at the the uh, fort. He pulls his gun. He's getting ready to kill him. And an army officer comes up and says, just so you know, if you kill an active member of the army... It's capital offense, and we will execute you right now. Hmm. And so he thinks, hmm, it doesn't work very well for me. We already know he has a history of making smart choices when it comes to dying or not dying. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So he doesn't kill Fitzgerald, but he tells him, if you ever get out of the army, I'm going to track you down, and I'm going to kill you. (laughs) Wow. And so he leaves. And he goes on for the next uh, little bit of time, 10, 15 years, roaming around the West, trapping, selling furs, trading, being a manly man, until 1833, wintertime, crossing a frozen river with two other trappers. They get ambushed by guess who? The Arakara. The Arakara. They shoot him. Scalp him, rob him, and he dies. He finally dies? Finally dies. Wow. After all that. But he never he never killed Fitzgerald then? Nope. Hmm. Never did. Isn't that a story? That is So here's the tricky thing. Like you said at the beginning, it's a couple hundred years old. We know most of these stories really happened. We also know that a lot of the details come from Hugh Glass himself. And if there's one thing we know about uh, retelling a story, especially when you think you're a manly man, Mm. is it always gets a little bigger, a little spicier than maybe real life. So you don't ever know with any of these stories, you know, how How do we know that he finally got scalped and stuff, though? I mean, obviously, he couldn't write about that. Wikipedia told me. Uh. 
They found his body. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. There is a uh, super cool giant monument where he died over in, I think it's South Dakota. It's him fighting the bear with a knife. And it's pretty cool. But again, in reality, he didn't kill the bear with the knife. No. Most likely. Yeah. But but no one knows. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Maybe he had a knife in his hands. Well, I'm sure he had a knife. Yeah. Bears freak me out, man. Not oh. as much as cougars. Yeah. But they freak me out when I'm out backpacking. Yeah. I guess the thought for me is as a mama bear, it's like, yeah, you want to protect your babies. But at the same time, if you're going to get yourself killed protecting your babies, probably a dumb idea. Why not just like try to make sure that their babies are not going to get, you know, really hurt and then just take them and run away because then you're with them. Yeah, I think that's a lot of like human logic there. Yeah, well, I don't actually know how animal level logic works. Apparently enough to rip someone's face off if they get close to your children. I know, but at the same time, if she knows that it's a threat to her babies that this strange thing is around, don't you think she should be like, oh, maybe it's a threat to me and it'd be better to be alive for my babies? I don't think she thinks that, no. Hmm. That's I too bad. I think she thinks kill, thing, eat berries, find salmon. But she knows how to, like, be a mama. Does she? I mean, you could be right. I'm not that familiar with bear behavior. Any animal. <laughs> okay. I don't think that's true. You know, there's a lot of animals that eat their children. But mammals in general don't. Okay, any mammal generally. Generally speaking, if humans do that, they go to jail for a long time. Yes. Yes, they If do. they eat their children. Or kill them. Or kill them. Yeah. So, um, well, that is quite the story. And, I mean, I guess if revenge can keep you alive that good, I guess... That's great, but I'd like but to you think, channel it, right? Yeah. Like, okay, I'm so angry that it's going to get me back to civilization. Right. And then you eat some food and you take a hot bath and you stop breathing out of the side of your neck. <laughs> and you're like, actually. Well, I mean, I like that they I'm okay here. He forgave uh, Bridger. Yeah. Especially if that ends up actually being Jim Bridger. Because he did lots of good things. I don't know if he did anything good, but it becomes like this big historic figure. Right. I mean, I would like to think that he took that moment in his life, like, hey, I'm not going to kill you, and just did all the good things after that. So, Yeah. Maybe. Well, it's quite the story. It is quite the story. Very manly. Yeah. I mean, he was not meant to die. Like, the, he was meant to do something else and continue on. I mean, for sure. So Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> and this, the, the craziest thing is it all happened. Like, that whole thing from... Him leaving on the original expedition and being shot in the leg to him finding Fitzgerald is like not even 18 months. He gets shot in the leg, mauled by a bear, six weeks, goes on another expedition, fights the Arakara, hikes for a month, waits for a little bit, hikes all the way back down to Nebraska. That's a busy year and a half. Yeah. Very busy. I still don't know what you eat or when you eat. Well, I don't think back then. It's like you eat what you can, when you can. But I mean, do you, think he, had, skinnier, do you, you think he had big muscles? I don't think he had big muscles. I think he had very, very strong muscles. Mm. Yeah. So there's actually pictures of him. I'm sure you'll post one or two maybe. I will. If you want to see a picture of Hugh Glass. Go to our Facebook page, Strange mm-hmm. Species. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, you can email us at strangerspecies at gmail.com. Um, I think those are the only ways. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, welcome to all the new listeners. A couple new countries this week. Mm-hmm. I had a new listener from Slovenia. One from Iran. I'm trying to think if there's any other new ones. Um, Canada is quickly falling into third place. Wow. Yeah, the United Kingdom is quickly surpassing weekly listeners over Canada. Come on, Canada. I am Canadian. I know. So it is actually, surprisingly, you. so you're Western Canadian. You're from Alberta. There's actually a lot more people from Ontario that listen than even, like, BC and Alberta. Hmm. Where are all my Western peeps? 
They are letting you down. I know. Pick it up a notch. And you just send it to my cousin. There you go. Um, Well, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoy the show, please give it a review. Uh, And more importantly, just tell your friends. We just love people listening. It's a blast for us to do this. Um, And if you're enjoying it, then pass it on to some other people. Other than that, everyone have a wonderful week. And we will talk to you next week with another crazy story. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Oh, and tell your kids, too. Our kids love it, and it's clean enough for kids. That is true. There you go. It keeps one of our particular children quiet for 45 minutes at a time. It's wonderful. It is. (laughs) So, okay. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.